and all of these various parts, the BIM, the revenue options, the planning amount options, the fixed costs, the IDC allocations, and then the new wrinkle that Delegate Crotty is bringing up, how would the CARES Act funding and budgets figure into this, if at all? You know, all of that would be presented to the uh, branch Tucson about June 30th. And they can, at that day, or they might want to do a follow-up meeting, depends on how it goes, they would uh, eventually come up with a branch chief's agreement, a written document that would be submitted to the BNF committee to be considered the way the schedule is July 7th. That's the way the um, the events are um, 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 rolling out at the moment, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I believe that was, there was uh, part of that question was posed to our legislative council, uh, Ms. Lowell. Mr. Chair, I believe Ms. Bobroff is on the call and she would like to answer Delegate Crotty's question. So um, I, will, oh. I will let her. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair uh, and Budget and Finance Committee. This is, uh, this is Dan Bobroff. Um, so, yes, uh, I think that uh, Delegate Crotty is requested to take a look at how the care funding uh, will affect this budget, the upcoming budget, and what uh, expenses that are usually in the budget can be covered by the CARES Fund is a very uh, important uh, analysis. And it is something that I believe, uh, certainly my office, I don't feel like we have uh, the expertise or access to document, budget documents necessary to do that analysis. But I think it is uh, something that the controller's office and OMB, with the assistance of DOJ, uh, are looking at uh, or will be looking at. I think the controller has already started to look at some of it. Um, on a uh, another question, the delegate Friday asked is as far as a continuing resolution. Uh, it's not. It's my opinion uh, that continuing the, the drafting and creation of a, uh, uh, a continuing resolution doesn't have to uh, wait until this budget uh, budget process fails or moves into emergency mode because of the pandemic. So my office will uh, start researching and putting to together a continuing resolution so it's there in advance uh, if, if necessary or when um, the committee or the council decides to go that direction. And the last question that I, or suggestion I might make, if I may, is that uh, the $15 million award for the judicial branch is 638 contract that just came in may have some uh, effect uh, on this year's budget as judicial branches uh, traditionally funded much with general funds that they could have funded if they got sufficient 638 funds. Uh, thank you, Chair. I apologize if I went on too long. Okay, thank you for that response. Uh, and uh, back to uh, Shema Delegate Cardi. Does that uh, take your question? Uh, it does, Chairman. If I could ask Mr. Bial, in terms of, I know um, the $15 million was just announced, was it Thursday? Um, uh, I don't know then when are we going to have that conversation, how, uh, because it was for, was it for fiscal year 2014? Um, I just don't know how that, what's going to be the process, if they could keep us updated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee members, any others? Any other questions, committee members, for Mr. Biel?
Okay, yeah. Um, uh, I have a question. Uh-huh. Um, I'm trying to understand. Um, the, the Mr. Vial. Um, so who will be the 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 person to talk to or our chair? Um, the the the, the other money that we that, that that the nation receive is there um they could give us uh when when are they can give us a update on it, see how much money people are just saying two two hundred million somebody says eighty eighty two eighty six million dollars let me see it because I'm not I want to know that I know that uh, we kind of overheard it from uh um our lobbies saying that it's from the like uh the forty percent which is uh forty percent of the eight billion dollars what is that three point two billion dollars that AA the eighty six billion that's given to us if you don't need to call so who who can update us um uh, chair Kushina um either Mr Bial or Ms. Kirk would you answer if you'd be able to answer um I'll get Elmer Begay's question I'll answer it in part, um, but I don't have the details, so I'll defer to Ms. Kirk. All I'm aware from OMB is the announcement from the Attorney General. Okay, that's on the judicial one, the 15 million. Now, the other 40%, I heard the President talking in one of the meetings yesterday that it was either received or was coming $200 million plus, is what I recall. But I don't know if we have it in our bank account yet. The uh, controller can speak to that. Mr. Chair. Ms. Kirk? Uh, oh, um... Chair and members of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, I just wanted to report that as of yesterday morning, there was one deposit that was made into our bank account, our designated bank account, and that was in the amount of $86,358,004. That is the only deposit from Treasury so far. Um, if there are anything out there regarding, you know, 200 or so, I haven't heard anything about it, at least at my office. The only other thing I can say, we did get a policy alert from NAFOA, and there, um, I believe there's some Treasury has been holding back in a reserve account a couple of um um, for a couple of reasons, one is the ANC um, uh, litigation, then there's some other ones. I think there's a Prairie Band Potawatomi. And so this morning, at least as to NAFOA, um, I believe Treasury was told to um, distribute $679 million, um, to the various tribes. Um, and I believe the court and probably DOJ or um, Chief Legislative Counsel might have more on the legal side, but I believe the court was really harsh because they basically told Treasury, you need to send out the money, you know, um, this has gone long enough or something to that effect. So, um, so I don't know if that means we'll see some more deposits going forward here. So that's that's all I have to report. I can have. Oh, Christina, thank you for that response, Tom. That yeah, committee members, any other questions or comments from Mr. Biel? Okay, hearing none. No, I'll call for the question. We have a motion and a second. That uh, Shanda Delegate Yellowhair. 
Uh, yeah, that, I'm sorry. I was on mute. Okay. Um, I have a, I have a quick question. Um, Dr. Brown, yeah. you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, I wanted to know from Madam Toller, um, all the funding, the COVID relief funding that is coming to Navajo, that would include um, IHS, um, NHA, CDBG, um, and I believe we received a report the other day, last week, on um, the behavioral health part. As, if I understand correctly, did they get over $623 million? And what are they planning on doing with that? Um, as Budget and Finance Committee members, I think we owe to our Navajo people all the fundings that are coming into Navajo and how it's being expended. So um, if we could get a breakdown, maybe in an email, how much money is coming in. And I understand that there's 80 plus million that's coming in from the, the rest of the 40%. And then in the future, how much is also coming in. So I think it is up to, as Budget and Finance Committee, I, I don't know, maybe this, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like our committee is not doing enough to really stay on top of all the funding. I think it is our duty as Budget and Finance Committee. Maybe in this pandemic, we need to change. I, I appreciate the Friday meetings, but I really feel like we need, maybe it's just me, Chair, and Vice Chair, and the rest of the committee members. But I feel like this committee should be like on top of all this funding. We should be all over it like, like crazy monkeys. And we should be having a really, like basically what president's doing is president doing budget and finances job. I'm just trying to understand. I'm, I'm like constantly going over my email and trying to read everything. And I feel like I, like I'm, I'm saying this because I have people constantly messaging me. When is the money coming? Where's this? What is this? What about this? What about bullying? What about this? How are we combating? This is the reason why it's spreading. And we seem to be some of the, the key committee to be really addressing some of these. So um, I apologize for my ignorance. Um, I have no shame in saying that, but that's how I feel, Chair. Um, if you could, if we could know all the fundings that are coming in a spreadsheet on COVID relief funding, um, across Navajo, I know IHS would be getting their 40% as well. Because I'm saying this because I am sitting here in Kayenta and people are coming to me left and right about burial assistance, coming to me about getting tested, coming to me about all these issues that are directly related to COVID. And I don't feel comfortable as an elected delegate to say, I don't know, or let me find out. Um, I need more. Um, that's where I'm coming from. So thank you for 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 this. Yeah, thank you, Chair. That's it. Sure. Sure. Is uh, Mr. Shorty, Mr. L. Shorty, are you on the line? Oh, I'm on, I'm on the line. I'm okay. Just hold that question for um, uh, during your report, and you can um, <clears throat> give an explanation on that. Uh, doing your report, Mr. Shorty, so hold that question there. Uh, that committee members were on the schedule, the budget schedule. Like if we could keep our questions to the schedule and what is budget and finance's stance on options that are being presented to the committee and also the continuing resolution. So those to be the questions sure. that should sure. be, uh, yeah. could be Asking, uh, Mr. Shinanda, do you get Um, sure, this is Dr. Um, uh, thank you for that. Um, I have a question, um, regarding the schedule. I, is there, um, I know that it sounds like, uh, the way, uh, Mr. Bion is giving us that, um, um, schedule is again by from the previous years. It's always been like that. The schedule is your name. Um, my, always my concern was that, um, what's, what's his, um, plan 
since we're in COVID, uh, um, uh, in that, um, in time of that COVID-19, uh, it's affecting all the, 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 the programs are called, um, how, is there a way that, yeah, can it be, the um, schedule, um, differently? I mean, where we could uh, expedite this as soon as possible? Uh, the, 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 uh, I should say there's no other plan. This is, I, I don't think this is a federal guideline. I think it's, it's, it's our own guideline. I think that would be awesome. Uh, uh, can it be done? And that's always my question for, for, for Mr. Biel. It's always, it's always the same. In the understanding of, now that because of that, it's, nothing's been accomplished with the past how many months now. With the, there's no, the, um, looking at the program is, um, um, accomplishments. Okay. So I was uh, wondering about that. So it is, it's my question. With that, uh, committee members, uh, Shanda, I'll give Amr Begay's question and comment to give Mr. Biel. Mr. Chair, members of BNF committee, uh, speaking to Delegate Begay's question. First of all, the, the process for the development of the annual comprehensive budget is in law. It's it's in the Appropriations Act, Title 12, Section 800, and so forth. So it lays out the particular process procedure that we utilize. As you remember, it starts, generally speaking, at the end of the second quarter when the controller does the annual revenue projection. So that starts the process at least a preliminary process where we do prepare the BIM and do the um, yeah, work fun. work with the branch chiefs on the planning amounts and so on and so forth. And eventually comes to BNF at some point who enacts the legislation. What a privilege, sir. Sure. Mr. Doug, I'm going to a point of privilege. Um, I think I just only ask question to Mr. Biao. If it can be done, it's going to be the whole, the whole thing again. I said, hey, it can't be done. This is the way it is. It's all my question. Okay, Mr. Biao, would you answer that question to, to the point? Uh, no. So, a request from uh, Mr. Uh, Delegate Elmer Begay. Well, I guess I could say this is that it's partly well, illegal. It's partly a legal right question. Now. But um, just like the 20 day requirement at year end, that was waived. So the attorneys could why could 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 advise, um, presumably, whether much of the same process can be waived as well. Mr. Chair. Please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Shina. Thank you for the questions. <clears throat> um, committee members, any other questions or comments regarding this uh, this topic on our agenda? Please say so. Then now y'all call for the question. Shina, uh, y'all get yellow here. Right, this one too. Don't get yellow hair. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Green. Okay, Shema, Delegate Cotty. Uh, Delegate Amber Tina Spock Cotty, both green. Thank you for the report. And Kushina Ado, it's Delegate uh, Nathaniel Brown. Uh, yeah, uh, Delegate Brown, both green. Kushin Agashina, Delegate Elmer P. Vigation, and Ah, how do you vote? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, we have four in favor. Uh, wait, I want to shut down. 
on this uh, report. Thank you, Mr. Biel. And if you would just remain on the line, there might be other what? questions that come up on um, this uh, next uh, item. So. We are on I, um, our agenda. We no, do have. Um, he didn't he? Can you? I asked him if he was. Is this a crystal tree that's on the line here? You can mute your phone. What? Item D on our agenda, update on the COVID-19 uh, CARES Act funding received by the Navajo Nation. Uh, Mr. Cordell Shorty from the uh, controller's office I heard him earlier. Then we did have we do have Mr. Bial and also our controller, Ms. Kirk. So, Mr. Shorty, you're up right now. Chairman Inyo, members yeah, of the budget finance, Go ahead. members of the budget finance committee, and all who are in on the call participating in this budget finance committee meeting. Good morning, do yadu uh, I emailed a report this morning. Uh, it's by memorandum of June 16, 2020. Uh, I saw Ms. Nikai forwarding this e email to you. So I'll, I'll speak from that uh, report and, and the memorandum. The memo is to Paulson Chaco, Chief of Staff. Coming from me, subject is report on COVID-19 and CARES Act funding, which are externally restricted funds. But this report is, is as of today. Uh, it's an update to the report that we issued June 5th. Page one is the budget expenditure report. It shows nine awards totaling 16.2 million. Uh, these are awards set up an FMIS and available for uh, expenditure, available to carry out the purpose of the funding. Uh, the, the report is sorted by program and division responsible to administer the funds. Uh, since the last report, June 5th to the latest report, additional awards that have been set up are shown on Row six, seven, eight, fourteen, eighteen, and nineteen. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that again when we get to the actual report. Uh, this represents an increase of the award set up an FMIS by six point nine million. Previous report showed nine point three million, and the report at hand shows sixteen point two million. Total expenditure, $25,000 plus shown in column L of the report, is the same from June 5th report. No change in the amount of the expenditure. Page two is a listing of awards and other information we have on the funding. Uh, the first section is uh, awards pending set up and FMIS. There are a total of seven. Uh, total funding is Ten uh, six point six hundred ten point five million. Uh, the, the, those are shown on row two to eight. Uh, what is needed to uh, set up the award in FMIS is uh, explained in column H. Uh, two awards have been added since the June fifth report, which are shown on row seven and eight. Uh, grant application, uh, there's a couple of them that have been added to the list. Uh, what we reported previously has gone through the process so signed by the president and the uh, information provided on that. Then there's grant application. We're aware that has been submitted, but to date we have not received any documentation from the program that has submitted those. So the total award showing what's an F an FMIS and what is pending set up, it, it totals 626.8 million. This is an increase of, uh, by 7.9 million to the 618.8 million that was reported on June 5th. 
So that's an overview on the um, cover memo. The next is page one. Uh, this report was generated as shown up on the right hand, upper right hand corner of the page, June 15, uh, information uh, included in FMAS. The heading of the report, and then there's a legend, uh, the, the column, and, and the description on what the information in, in the columns represent. So row one and two shows uh, funding to Navajo Epidemiology Program under uh, NDOH. Uh, column K shows an award of 1.5 million, 25 million expended, 1.4 uh, remaining. Uh, rows three to nine is award to uh, NDOH's Health Management Service contract. Uh, 638 additional money uh, provided above and beyond the regular um, program funding. Uh, the total is 6.5 as shown in column K, $21 expended. And column N shows a balance of 600, 6.5 million remaining. Row 10 to 11, this is a award to tribal enrollment program. Four million dollars, uh, no expenditure. The, the, the uh, award uh, in full remains for four million to be expended. Uh, row twelve to fourteen. Uh, these are uh, award to EMS under DPS. Uh, a couple of them. Uh, notice that on row fourteen there, there's a. Uh, an in code under column E. Uh, this award um, is set up an FMIS. It's still awaiting execution. Uh, award by funding agency is subject to uh, acceptance by uh, by the president with his signature. This is going through signature process. This where an in code. The total funding to AMS is 1.2 million. No expenditure. And row 16 to 20, this is funding to um, well, I'm not, I'm not the social services program. There are three different uh, business units. Column K shows three million, no expenditure. And the overall COVID-19 okay. funding is on column K, 16.2 million, 25,000 expended, a balance of 16.2. So, uh, a balance of 99 percent of the funding remained to be expended. So that, that's an overview on the budget expenditure report generated off of FMIS. The next page is um, a listing of awards or application pending uh, a setup. Uh, row one through nine is an uh, award the nation received. Uh, that hasn't been set up in FMIS. Uh, totals are shown in column F610.5 million. And column H has information uh, on what's needed to uh, put the award in FMIS. Row 10 to 18 is a listing of uh, application that's going through the review process. The application for uh, by NDOT from row 11 to 15 has been signed by the president, as I indicated, uh, as shown on the column H, so this should be uh, submitted to the funding agency. A couple more that has been added is uh, row 16 and 17, uh, award to uh, the courts under judicial and also in, in, in DOT funding for an our transit system. Uh, eight, eight, nine, 1.9 million as shown as column F. Then a couple of applications that have been submitted, but to date we have not received any information on this. So that's an overview on page two. Uh, on, on the email that I sent to uh, Paulson this morning, I, I did ra raise the concern that um, as page one of the report shows 16.2 million, only 25 thousand expended and this shows that the purposes of the funding is not carried out and the division and person program 
uh, personnel need to uh, step up and, and uh, deliver the uh, uh, the purpose of the uh, the awards. The the other is that some of the award listed on page two we, uh, have been on there since uh, May twenty second. We haven't received budget and award document, whatever document is needed for that to be set up in FMIS. So uh, this is the first that has gone on record with some of the concern. Also uh, included the executive and the division directors of the program that received these awards. Uh, the reason why previously I did not CC them is um, that the division and program have access to FMIS already. So in the old days, prior to FMIS, controller's office used to provide report to the programs and division because they didn't have access to the reporting system at the time. But with FMIS um, program have access to the, uh, the division director, assistant director, program manager, accountants, contract analysts. So the thought is that those uh, personnel in those positions keep the division director informed. So here's a report on the strength. Uh, that for that reason, I didn't CC them in the past, but uh, this time I did. So that's uh, an overview of the report, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Okay, committee members. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Okay, motion. Motion by Shanta, Delegate Honor Begay. Is there a second? I'll second this Delegate Brown. Okay, Shanta, Delegate Brown uh, seconds that motion. Also, Mr. Shorty, back to you. Uh, there was a question posed uh, by Delegate Brown. Uh, so if you would respond to that question. Okay. Um, I, I, as I recall uh, the question, is that um, is there a, a report information available uh, um, by the controller or the Navajo Nation of uh, what funding for, uh, from CARES and, and, and COVID has come to the Navajo Nation? So uh, I, I just gave an overview on that. But as far as uh, award to other Navajo Nation entities like NHA, NTUA, NECA, uh, uh, other entities, uh, the nation uh, uh, does not keep record of that in, in, in FMIS, so uh, I wouldn't be able to provide that information. Mr. Chair. Uh, Kushina, with that, um, any other questions, committee members, regarding Mr. Shorty's report? Uh, this is Delegate Cardi with a question. Go ahead, Shima. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, appreciate it, colleagues, and um, she asked for providing uh, this report. I, I think this is a, to me, this is a very critical report because it gives me a snapshot of um, the efficiency and effectiveness of Navajo Nation to spend um, federal dollars that were received prior to CARES. And now, as we move forward, um, if I may ask if uh, we can just verify on page two, um, column F for the start date, uh, I think in my notes, um, this funding before, if I have this right, was, uh, I'm not sure if it was just COVID-19 um, that was available starting January 1st, but if um, later on the program identified this this is how they want to spend their money. If you could just clarify uh, those for me. And also, Chair, I think um, getting this report from Mr. Uh, Shorty, he's only presenting, and he only has the capacity to present what the programs are doing. I think it's time for budget and finance to start pulling in um, these programs and letting chairs of the oversight committees know that um, these programs need to um, give us an, up an update on what's their plan to spend. And uh, because uh, my concern and what I, when I spoke of yesterday at the work session is if Navajo Nation, even though if we allocate uh, funding to all the programs who are requesting, 
this demonstrates that they are having severe challenges in getting this money spent. And so we have to look at not only expediting the process from OMB and OOC, but how do we keep programs accountable? So who at the end of the day is accountable? Uh, and, and we should have that. And I think that would be a report from Paulson Chaco. And for every one of these line items, we should know who and what entity is responsible to not only get this budget um, into the system, but also to spend it uh, within a certain time frame. Um, I'm concerned about um, in terms of uh, just of the 16.2 million that, uh, and I agree that only two percent, or not even two percent, twenty five thousand. And so, how, how what do we do as a committee as we go through these proposals? And um, that programs are requesting funds, but uh, the challenge will always be is can they can they spend uh, those dollars? I know um, colleagues, I think it was Delegate So asked yesterday about the enterprises role. Uh, I think uh, this we should have a conversation with some of the enterprises in terms of their capacity and if they could do some of this work um, that that would originally um, be the responsibility of the program. So I, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Cordell Shorty if this is the only information. I know this is a high-level summary, but if I could request uh, for each of these funds just to document who um, who is the point of contact and um, that they should either give a written update to the committee or at least by Friday we should have an update on when, um, because I'm looking at the comments on page 3, uh, column H, it says budget not submitted. Uh, to me, that is, um, you know, we need to nip these all, like, 164 reviews since May 4th. Uh, that that seems unreasonable. Uh, need notice of award, and if we could ask, um, in terms of if U.S. Treasury is going to provide uh, that award, and how does that affect in terms of the contract and the budget for uh, not only the U.S. Treasury money, but the other money identified here in the report. And so as I'm more getting more familiar with this report, I'm disappointed that I'm not seeing this money spent, uh, because that, that kind of counters uh, the executive's narrative that... Um, that that they want to um, provide uh, immediate relief when, in fact, right here we have money um, that can move out and uh, may not have the limitations of the six hundred million. Uh, thank you for, and I'll and I'll hold for that answer. Thank you. Okay, that um, Mr. Shorty, back to you. Chairman Hinio, uh, members of the Budget Finance Committee. The question was on COVID-19 money, CARES Act money. Uh, okay, that there's, I guess, two, uh, two, two uh, tier, if you will, type of allocation. One is um, the 600 million. Uh, that one is r really specific as far as the, the effective date and the end date. The 600 million, uh, uh, the period that was made available is March 1st, 2022, December 30, 2020. Uh, and, and further, any uh, but items budgeted already uh, prior to March 27th cannot be used. Uh, uh, CARES Act can, cannot fund that. So there's two part. Now, as far as program receiving CARES Act or COVID-19 funding shown on, on page one of the report, that's made a part of the existing uh, agreement or contract. For, for example, epidemiology, the, the 1.5 million, uh, I reported the last time that uh, as, as shown on the column F and G, the funding period uh, it starts 8-31-2019 and ends 9-30. And uh, the notice uh, by funding awards, this 1.5 million can be used to address the public health emergency uh, with respect to COVID-19 and, and still uh, available within the, the period allowed for that grant, grant agreement. So it's not 
like March 1st, 20, uh, moving forward, that the, uh, that the uh, CARES Act, the $600 million CARES Act money is subjected to. Now, uh, the listing on row 4 to 8, this is 638 contract. So these monies are made of, of, uh, available and a, a, a part of the contract. So as, as we know, 638 monies are available until expended, until every penny is expended. So these, these monies were made a part of the contract. Uh, uh, and that's the case for most of them, the tribal enrollment money, the emergency medical services money, and then the social services money. So those are available for uh, the duration of the uh, annual funding agreement. Uh, we're in FY20 right now to, to end September 30th and further uh, available for the duration of the, uh, the multi-year contract. Let's say social services contract it, it will end two years from uh, September 30th, then these monies are still available for the duration of the contract period. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, that's my response. Okay, with that um, response, I believe uh, OMB is also still the scene in and, and the controller's office too. I think part of that question was that there needs to be uh, transparency within the executive branch programs that are given these funds and there needs to be um, some responsibility as far as uh, expenditure and in a timely manner. Uh, so if you could take note of that too also. Back to the committee. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Shorty? Uh, Chairman Tenio, I have one last question. No, Go ahead, Shema. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Shorty, for that um, response. And, um, and I think uh, in terms of like my previous uh, request, if we could have some legal or some analysis, uh, the funding that's currently available for, um, like, let's say, epidemiology, is is um, is that eligible for reimbursement through the CARES funding? So I think I'd like to get more of an idea of um, what's available out there and then what's available for reimbursement. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Shorty, back to you again. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, the 1.5 million, uh, uh, as I said, funding the agency informed the nation that money could be used to address the uh, COVID-19 issues. Um, I, 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 I always say, in any uh, money that the program needs beyond that, um, the 1.5, uh, I'm certain they can re request consideration for allocation from this 600 million that will be made available soon. Uh, understanding that whatever they're requesting above the one point should, should not uh, fund expenditures that are already budgeted included and, and included in this 1.5 million. To chair. Thank you for that response, Mr. Shorty. To me, members, any other questions? Chair, I got a question. Mr. Sure. Smith, good. No, thank you. Thank you, OMB. I would, uh, this brings a thought to the mind of uh, how we're going to be spending the money. Number one, these programs already have been awarded certain dollars. And I heard that uh, if it's already in their budget, then they're allowed to use that. And I see that they were looking, they're looking at the uh, COVID-19 appropriation, our monies that's being given to the Navajo Nation. The question I have is, how do we keep track of that? Like if they take a certain amount of money and that money is uh, supposed to be uh, utilized for their program, but yet it's already in their budget. And then when it comes to auditing, we get dinged because it's a 
Navajo Nation's responsibility to ensure that we're not utilizing the money, just like we were talking about the uh, citizen, to replenish the funds back in the citizen. And uh, if the program has already that earmarked, that the nation will end up having to pay that back rather than the program. So what prevents that from the nation or the program and the uh, accountability and the responsibility and transparency? Because that uh, is going to be a, a question. Maybe that's why it's kind of being delayed right now to really decipher all this. But we need to spend the money immediately. We got six hundred million dollars. We got another a uh, few hundred million dollars coming in to uh, help our people out there. That's my question on that. Uh, I don't know if OMB has an answer to that, or if there's going to be a separate account, or who's going to be maintaining the uh, tracking and ensuring that uh, the nation doesn't end up paying back. Um, thank you, Chair. Okay, with that question, uh, Mr. Shorty, are you able to respond to that? Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, uh, yeah, I, I can provide a response. The expenditure plan that um, is in the process of being developed to be used as an instrument uh, for two uh, applicants request funding applicant B being entities program that is seeking six hundred million dollars. In there one one among the question that will, will be uh, that the program uh, uh, currently receiving CARES Act funding already or COVID nineteen funding. If yes, or then additional information will have to how much and maybe even submit a budget uh, on that. Uh, to, to support the application, here's a budget of the CARES Act money, and then that's where uh, the, the the check will have to be done. The the, the budget on the CARES Act money that you uh, an entity already received, and then what is requested is going to have to be analyzed to make sure that um, the budget requested in this uh, application for the six million is, is not. Uh, that does not seem to duplicate expenditures budgeted and the CARES Act funding that the program or the entity has already received. So that, that's a, 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 uh, a daunting task, I would say, a daunting check that will have to be done by OMB and uh, programs and individuals involved in considering application for the $600 million to make sure that if the program is already receiving CARES Act money, that if they do uh, get considered for funding, it, it, the funding does not duplicate uh, money that they already receive for. So that, that's how it, it's going to be handled. Okay. Uh, committee members, any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Uh, hearing none, we do have a motion and a second in place uh, to accept the report. I'll call for the question. Uh, so are you voting, Shinada? Yeah. Okay, Shane. For that, uh, Shinada Del Gallagher is uh, voting green. Ashkoda? Oh. Okay, Shane. Ado Vice Chair Smith? Green. You see, Ado Shamat Delegate Crowdy? Uh, Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty votes green. Thank you. Thank you, Shina. I go with this. So, um, so let's delegate uh, Nathaniel Brown. I got uh, Delegate Brown votes green. Thank you, Shina. I'm going to ask Shina, Delegate Amber P. the Gay. How do you vote? Delegate Amber P. Okay, we have four in favor. Uh, zero opposed, chair not voting. 
So just uh, moving down on our agenda to the report section still. Uh, item E, a uh, COVID-related monetary donations and food uh, supply donations presented by Ms. Uh, Perling Kirk. And I don't know if uh, we, Madam uh, AG with Dory McFall is on the line. And I'm here, sir. Uncle Sheena, I don't know about Dr. Jill Jim with the uh, Department of Health. Okay, with this, so uh, we'll go with uh, Madam AG uh, McFall uh, for on this report first, and then we'll go to Ms. Kirk. So, uh, thank proceed. you, Chair, and thank you, Chair, and the uh, committee, and for the opportunity to provide a, a report today. I just sent Dr. Jim a um, a message to let her know that um, you were calling on her because we were trying to collaborate on this portion of the report. And uh, just to um, to provide the community some uh, context, uh, I think you're already aware, for the non-monetary donations, um, we sort of have uh, a shift in how this has been handled previously. And um, I think I've already reported on the Department of Justice's role in sort of facilitating donations and answering calls and providing information to potential donors um, to just facilitate those um, those donations to the nation. And we track all of that on um, the, the FEMA forms uh, that we were submitting to the uh, logistics um, section of the Health Command Center. And, um, you know, part of our, our log that we keep at DOJ for both monetary and non-monetary donations. And we have the non-monetary donations separated into medical and non-medical. And part of our logs that we have, which I'm happy to share with the committee, um, are just um, sort of based on our conversations. So uh, we don't actually see what comes in. To, so we can talk to somebody about donating 10,000 masks to the nation and provide all the information so that the donor is able to provide that uh, donation to the nation on their end, but we don't necessarily see it when it comes in. And so our logs are not really helpful. Um, and then at the point when um, humanitarian operations was moved from uh, logistics section to uh, Harland, Cleveland under Department of Emergency Management, and I, I did reach out to Harlan t today as well um, about his inventory listing. Uh, but once that that change occurred, um, the couple things happened. One is uh, DOJ started receiving um, United States Postal Office mail. So we have information with respect to those um, post office deliveries that uh, we, we, we receive at DOJ and our staff is logging those uh, as well on those same forms. Uh, and then Harlan is receiving um, those uh, donations as well, either the in-person deliveries or things that are coming through uh, uh, FedEx or uh, um, UPS at Nakai Hall. And so uh, he has staff there that's doing an inventory log for that. But we also have uh, two separate inventories through the Health Command Center. Um, one for medical donations that are being received at the den, as well as for in, um, donations that are are uh, were received and are still being received at the wellness center. And so, one of the conversations that we've had um, with Harland and with um, our donation branch, as well as with Dr. Jim, is figuring out a way to uh, coordinate all these inventories. And I've only seen. Um, Harlan's inventory, and he sent it just prior to this this meeting. Um, I have not seen any of the other inventories, but I think that um, we need to continue on our end the conversations with um, all of the folks who are receiving uh, donations, so that we can better report to the committee and to the leadership. So, just with that that context, I just want to I want to share that. Uh, one of the things that we've also talked about is being able to better um, uh, integrate these systems so that we don't have four different inventories going um, and access to none of them. Uh, but uh, one of the, the, the ways to do that is through a donation um, log app. Um, but, and, and we've talked about um, 
um, purchasing some iPads that would have that app on it so that, that you would, we would be able to provide real-time information. Um, so we did, we did make a request to get those um, iPads so that we would be able to log information. Um, and then and then be able to uh, generate a report that would be more more meaningful. But we don't have those yet. We do have our 213 logs at DOJ. Primarily, the stuff that we are receiving at DOJ are handmade masks, and then some community um, related donations. For example, water um, supplies for kids, hand sanitizer, the medical grade uh, PPE and masks and face shields um, and those those types of items we are physically seeing at Department of Justice and so we have that information on um, 213s that need to be uploaded into either that app or we will just generate our own log like we did with the phone call. Um, I can take a peek really quick here at Harlan's log um, for what's come in. And the nice thing about his blog that I could tell just off the bat is that they're also keeping track of where the items are going. And I can tell you that from our end, the stuff that we receive at Department of Justice, uh, the medical um, donations are going to the DENT, and the community donations are going to Nakai Hall. Uh, the um, masks um, have been centralized uh, in the past several weeks at Department of Economic Development. They had a mask project uh, at the uh, Civic Center, the fairgrounds earlier uh, last month, um, which has ceased operations, but they are continuing the part of the operation where they're sanitizing and disinfecting the masks, as well as repackaging them to in a package with instructions on how to wear them and how to clean them. And so we've just been um, uh, designating the masks there. Uh, I want to say that that's primarily what we're receiving, um, both at DOJ and at the Wellness Center. Um, I think that we've received probably well over half a million um, masks, but uh, JT would be the best source for the, that, that data. I know that he's also, in our donation calls, talked about um, implementing a um, not a 213 process because we know that doesn't work very well for the needs in the communities but for a process on just on their website to be able to request masks and have those um, designated out so i'm not sure if he's updated that on his website that was one of his to do items from our last call um, and then let me just see here Um, and I'm just looking at briefly at the, the log that Harlan sent to me. Uh, it's called Distribution from Nakai Hall. And it talks about primarily food uh, pallets and water um, masks, and it identifies where the chapters where those, those are going, as well as the department, for example, NDOT um, for community distribution. Also to um, families in quarantine, I know that they're supporting that part of the operation, uh, as well as other folks who are um, high, in a high-risk population category. And I knew that uh, the last time I was at Nakai Hall to drop stuff off that we received at our office, there were uh, CHRs coming to pick up um, food boxes for um, folks in their respective communities. So, but everything on the list here includes, um, like I was mentioning, just it's, it's broken down from everything from structures to clothing, PayPal, bad uh, right, uh, baby formula, baby wipes and diapers, um, flour, cleaning supplies, water. Um, I'm going to pick up some of the different ones here. And I know that the National Guard has also been helping there at Nakai Hall to, um, um, to make not just individual food boxes, for example, for the food cars, but to make uh, pallets of a variety of different kinds of foods that can be pushed out to a chapter. And then the chapter um, can uh, do the individualized distribution or the individualized repackaging, depending on what the particular needs are there in the community. 
But that's the information I have to share with the committee today. Thank you, Chair. Kashina, thank you for that report. Uh, back to our controller, Ms. Kirk. Do you have anything to add? Um, yes, um, I see I have, um, uh, see our Chair Otto, members of the committee. Um, I can um, briefly go over the monetary donations. Um, and this is just from our office. Um, we do have, we keep track of um, the online payment that's through the um, the donation branch. Auto, if you go to NDOH slash donation, Aogico, um, people, people make donations online using their credit cards. So since its inception, up to this morning, the online payments are two million two thousand six hundred and thirty dollars and seventy one cents. Auto. Um, we also our office also does receive a lot of um, snail mail um, in terms of uh, personal checks, those types of things. Auto. We also get um, wire transfers, um, electronic payments. And so, um, so far to date, we have $2,859,781.94, and that's as of today. So, um, I just wanted to let you know, so that's a total between the online payment and the FMIS checks and wires. It's four million eight hundred and sixty-two dollars and four hundred and twelve dollars and sixty-five. So ADE day and again, um, we our office did set up a um, um, a separate bank account. It's a depository account, and so um, all these online payments are going in there as well as we're depositing the checks and the wires. Um, the only thing that that would be net would be the credit card charges. So the other thing I was going to report, um, we were going to send out the, because there's um, an acceptance process of all donations, um, we do have, we did run reports of donations, essentially a list. Um, we were we were set to send that out again on the legislation. It says we have to, um, for every donation made by a donor in arrears who owes money to the nation, we have to check for that. So we're going to have to do that exercise. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware that the, the report is forthcoming. We just have to make sure any donation made um, to check for any arrears by every donor. And so, Otto, um, it, um, the, the report that I have is as of June 11, and there's also another report for the less than 1,000. So the less than 1,000 is has to be accepted by the president. Otto, the 1,000 and over has to be accepted by the president and concurred by speaker. So, and then uh, in the previous BNF, I said I would CC this committee. So, we're still working on those reports. Um, that exercise to look for a rearage um, that's owed the nation, that's going to be handled by us in cash accounts receivable section. And so, we're going to have to go through that as well. Um, so, I just want to go through that. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to add. Uh, so if you have. Uh, committee members, do you have a, a motion to accept the report? Yellow hair. Okay, yellow hair. Uh, motion to accept the report. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. This is Delegate Crotty. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion to second. And now it's up to the committee. Do you have any questions, committee members, for 
uh, our presenters. Uh, this is Delegate Cardi with a question. Uh, go ahead, Shema. Uh, thank you. Uh, if I could get clarification um, in terms of non-monetary donation, uh, what is the source or, or how is the Office of the President, Vice President, um, are they purchasing the food boxes they're distributing? Are those donations that are coming um, to the Navajo Nation? Uh, I did get a screenshot of um, President Nez um, from his personal Facebook account uh, responding to a constituent to ask their council delegate about the food boxes. And um, unfortunately, I haven't received that information. Uh, if you could provide that. And I would also want to know if uh, you would know um, in in the distribution in, in my district, I did observe a lot of um, Navajo Nation employees um, participating. Are, are they considered paid employees or are they volunteers? Uh, if um, just let me know if you have that information. Thank you. I'll go back on mute. Okay, that uh, actually I uh, believe uh, either Ms. Mc, uh, A.G. McFall or our controller, Kirk, who would be able to respond to that question. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is Doreen, and thank you, Delegate Cardi, for the question. Um, as far as I know, what is going out in terms of the non-monetary donations and the food boxes is just based on what comes in. I'm not aware of um, purchasing uh, food boxes. Um, I do know when there is a uh, planned community distribution and there's not enough food boxes, I know that um, they reach out to like uh, World Vision and the other um, organizations that are facilitating those, uh, St. Mary's Food Bank, that are facilitating those um, food box, um, uh, prepared food boxes for the, um, the communities there. And so, um, and then with respect to your second question about employees, my understanding is that it, that it should just be employees that are um, that are providing the the uh, distributions in the communities, and part of that is related to our uh, insurance and risk management requirements. I know that there was some um, questions early on about using uh, volunteers, and that uh, was created some issues for our our risk management folks in providing uh, coverage for people who are not employees of the nation. And so I think that there's been a limitation on um, people who are either working at the command center or um, it, involved in the community distributions um, that are that the president's office is doing at least, that it just include uh, Navajo Nation employees covered by uh, risk management. And I, the other thing I wanted to share related to the, um, the first question about the food boxes and I, I know this came up during the last report that I gave to the committee that, um, uh, that uh, at least humanitarian section under um, Department of Emergency Management is waiting is the um, uh, positive movement on the donation fund legislation 0126-20 um, that would provide the ability for uh, DEM to better uh, plan and respond to the needs of the chapters as those are defined by the, the, the delegates for those communities and by the chapters themselves. But I think right now without the ability to spend um, the $4.8 million, for example, that the OOC reported, um, you know, Harlan is limited on the pallets that he's, being, he's able to push out to the communities to just what is coming in. So it's a little bit random. But I think with the ability to spend the dollars, he'd be able to purchase the um, the, the supplies that are that are needed in the in the communities. And the other um, the other related to the 4.8 million dollars, uh, there is a separate GoFundMe account, and I haven't had an update from Mel recently on the um, progress in drawing down those dollars. And I don't think it's included in the controller's 4.8 million report, but there is $1.5 million in the nation's official GoFundMe account as well. Thank you, Chair. Ms. Shina, thank you for uh, that response. <clears throat> and I did, you alluded to a 
past budget and finance committee meeting where Paul Smichanko uh, gave a report and he indicated that they were using the president's uh, own office budget to purchase those uh, uh, food boxes. I believe they're from TNR, those um, cheap herd specials, if I, if I heard correctly. But with that, committee members, any other uh, questions or co for comments for the uh, presenters? Chair, I have uh, a question. Chair, is... oh, Vice Chair Smith, go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dory, for the report and also the controller for the uh, report. Uh, committee members, yeah, Dave. The uh, question I have is um, I see a lot of uh, folks putting up posts saying that they want donations. And uh, the former AG, I understand, has a donation going and helping folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we uh, ensure that those donations are being utilized to the maximum of their purposes of getting out to the folks? And we're sitting on $4 million. The other question is the chapters, they need funding they need uh services out there for example septic services for example uh home renovation i'm sure some of these donation monies were meant for to alleviate the overcrowding build a little uh house for folks uh hogan folks would be happy with the hogan how can the navajo nation is there a restriction to uh, use life that money. Thank you. That's my question. Okay, that's so, uh, one question from uh, Vice Chair Smith. Also, Shamat Delegate Cardi, were you going to ask a follow-up question? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. My question is, um, if I could be, if I could be given um, the amount that was spent um, on the food donations, and if that. Um, would uh, again, I would request if that um, would be qualify for a reimbursement on um, for uh, the CARES funding. And then my second question, and and if there's Office of the Speaker staff on the call, uh, you know, uh, in terms of how many chapters there are, it it um, does require a lot of assistance in in going to all 110 chapters. And so then, I don't. I'm trying to understand uh, why we were not able to do that as as delegates to provide um, that a similar type of service to our community members. Uh, we are partnering with a lot of nonprofits, and I'll be uh, meeting with is it World Central Kitchen that's providing help in Delegate Brown's community and um, surrounding areas. So I'm just trying to make sure that there's equity in terms of um, relief that is provided, and also in terms of um, the priority, there's um, challenges for individuals who do not have a vehicle um, to, to pick up uh, some of the um, donations. And as CHRs now are in contact tracing, um, they're, they're also somewhat limited to help us uh, to, to meet the needs of the at-risk and now the families or families that have someone who is um, physically or mentally challenged. And uh, so if I could uh, maybe, if there's a speaker staff on the line, I I'd like to have that conversation uh, with the office, with the chief of staff, uh, so that delegates can provide some immediate relief to their communities and their districts. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, do we have uh, anybody from the legislative branch speaker's office on the line? Good afternoon, Delegate Henio. This is Cheryl and Yazi. I am on the line. Uh, uh, with that, though, the, uh, uh, we have two questions, one from Vice Chair Smith. Um, we'll go to that question first, and then we'll go to uh, Shema Delegate Crowdy's question next. So back to our presenters. Uh, uh, Madam A.G. McFall or Controller Kirk would like to answer uh, the questions that were posed. Chair, this is Doreen. Um, so regarding uh, Delegate Smith's question, there are a lot of groups 
and individuals that are seeking donations for a variety of um, of um, efforts. And I did report to Law and Order Committee. Um, they'd ask for an update as well. That um, if you just go to GoFundMe and you type in the word Navajo in terms of a search, you will get more than 1,000 hits. And so at our office, we are receiving inquiries and um, complaints about, for example, donation diversion. I think you guys have all seen one recently about a, a donation diversion and a, a demand for repayment or replenishment of those of donations. But we see that uh, at DOJ um, um, with other um, um, donation uh, drives and, and depositories as well. And so trying to uh, keep a handle on that. And, and I've just been referring those um, complaints and issues uh, to white collar crime. I, I am aware that some have been referred to ethics and rules office as well. Um, so in terms of our office, we aren't trying to police them. We are just referring them to the places where those can be, uh, there can be some follow up. Um, we did have a conversation with folks that were involved in, for example, the Standing Rock uh, No Dapple protest and where they faced similar challenges. And I, I just saw something today about a, um, a, a, an issue with, for example, a Black Lives Matter uh, group that was collecting donations that weren't being used towards the effort. So, I mean, it's happening in other contexts as well, and we're hearing about it at Navajo as well. And so we're trying to get um, a hold on that. And we do have some direction, not only from our, um, our executive branch clients, but from Law and Order Committee to um, make sure that the Navajo name is remains protected in this, um, as they indicated that there's a lot of people that are using um, trademarked or um, or copyrighted um, either names or uh, the Navajo Nation seal as part of their donation effort. And in an effort to protect the name of the nation, we've been directed to uh, intervene in some of those matters to have folks either change their names or update the information so that they're not using the nation's flag or seal in, in their donation efforts. And one of the things that we learned from Standing Rock folks was that even after the protests were, were over, there was more than uh, half a million uh, donors that were willing to continue to donate to Standing Rock beyond the protests. And, you know, part of the name protection includes um, you know, not that the nation is going to want to continue to accept donations after the pandemic is over, but if there's ever a circumstance beyond the current pandemic where um, the nation is receiving those kinds of donations, and we do receive those kinds of donations for the scholarship fund, for example, that making sure that Navajo is not part of any kind, the Navajo Nation uh, as, a, as an entity is not part of any kind of perceived either um, 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 unaccountability or not using donations for the intended purpose. So I think that gets into the second part of Delegate Smith's question is what is the intended purpose? Um, some of the donations have very specific um, purposes. So we've had donors that have provided funding, for example, specific for DPS PPE or specific for burial assistance or specific for um, assisting either foster kids or um, uh, children in COVID positive homes. So some of them are, are very specific in terms of where the donation goes. I think the larger part of the, of the funding is um, to, for the nation to decide on how to uh, provide COVID-19 relief in the community. And so I think that it could include uh, some of the, the things that um, that uh, Delegate Smith also uh, mentioned, and you know, part of the reason um, that uh, the the current le the pending legislation for the donation fund is is putting um, that funding um, with the Department of Emergency Management is because that's the entity that uh, I think handles. Um, and I pulled their their um, 
their plan of operation, but I haven't had a chance to fully go through it. But in terms of responding to emergencies on the nation and working with the chapters to address um, emergency needs, that's at least the, the, a function that uh, DEM has uh, a role that they've fulfilled in the, in the past. And I know that the uh, legislation would also require a fund management plan so that um, the, those uh, uh, funding allocations are both accounted for and um, consistent with that, but also that they, um, that they meet the needs of the specific donor request for those that have those specific uh, requirements. Thank you, Chair. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. I got disconnected here. Okay, is that um, the extent of your response to the question? Okay, committee members, any other follow-up questions? I don't hear any, so that call for the question on um, accepting the report. Chair, um, yes. there, this is Peggy. Um, Delegate Crotty asked about the amount of money spent on food and okay. if that was a CARES Act reimbursement, if it would be eligible. And then um, she was also wanting to know why couldn't delegates do similar activities within their communities, their, their districts. Okay, thank you for reminding me. Uh, with that, uh, back to uh, Ms. Uh, Kirk, regarding that question, regarding the uh, expenditures that are being, um, uh, I guess, uh, competed right now regarding the food baskets, are those uh, reimbursable to the uh, programs that expended money? Uh, controller, Kurt? Um, oh, yeah, they, um, so in terms of the question whether um, expenditures are reimbursed by FEMA, um, I know that in terms of the uh, command center, um, that is what they're trying to do. Um, so I believe they got one reimbursement and then they were waiting on another one. So that was certain dollars, um, especially your general funds, such as the uh, 4 million UUSB, that would be things that they can get reimbursed on. Um, and so some of the other dollars that are being used would be some of your grant dollars. For example, that FP, one and a half million that's specifically for burial, so, um, and it's through NDOH, and so we're, they're trying to use as much of that as possible. And then also out of the four million, um, I believe some of that went to burial as well. And so um, what, what we want to do, I believe the the expenditure of the uh, four million is 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 near. I mean, I think they expend expend as much as they could. Um, so we can we can do a report um, next time um, as to what's being expended. Um, so some of the some of the things that it's budgeted for are media expenditure, um, they have uh, assistance, uh, furniture and fixtures, those are some of the equipment, um, personal property, those types of uh, categories. And so it is being, um, it is being utilized, so uh, and mostly what happens is the it, it has to go through India Wake and the command center. Dr. Jim 
David Nez, they approve those, um, the usage, they're the authorizing signers. Um, so any of that, especially your general funds, like the 4 million UUSB, those, those can be reimbursed by FEMA. And generally, once they're reimbursed by FEMA, then I believe they would go back um, to the same, they, they would be set up within a business unit as well to be, okay, so to be transferred over and then so it can be utilized. So that's kind of how that works. Um, like I said, would they have the four million, then there's various, um, as, as Mr. Shorty was talking about earlier, there's some awards. Some of them, they, ha they do have their budgets in, and then so those things can be utilized. I know they've been utilizing the one and a half million for the burial assistance as well. So that's essentially, um, it, sometimes the programs do use some of their own grant funding, their program monies and so forth. Um, so I think that's what I have in, in terms of that question. I see that. Okay, and then also with the second part of that uh, question was, Ms. Uh, Yazzi, if you're on the line for the speaker's um, office, yes, uh, were you able to get the question posed by Shamat al Uh Chair Henio, I am still working in regard to um, her question. As soon as I get an update, I will let you know. Okay, thank you for that. Committee members, any other questions regarding the report on donations? Chairman Henio, this is Delgate So, can I ask a question? Okay, um, committee members, any other questions? I don't hear any. Go ahead, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Chairman. I know members of the Budget Finance Committee. Um, I guess uh, Perlene was on the, um, uh, talking about the dollars that were, uh, that came down the pipeline from FEMA, especially the $1 million relating to burial assistance. It really caught my eye, my attention. Immediate as I was coming, as I as left to uh, to the city, I was on the phone with a um, with a uh, constituent where the burial system program is not assisting them. And if we have money on on on, on related to to a COVID debt. Why isn't it that these programs, these dollars, are not being directed to help assist these people related to COVID debt? I believe um, what I was told was that there was a policy issue, and um, I was told that um, there was the internal discussion with the president's office, the department, division director, um, Deswood Gishi, chief of staff, and I believe the controller that um, any uh, COVID that, 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 that's related to COVID that's going to a mortuary that doesn't have a contract with Navajo is not to be paid out. I have a Navajo family that uh, lives in Flagstaff due to work, and they're having that issue. And, uh, and, and, and um, they're, 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 they're feeling that it's a discrimination now. How are you guys discriminating against us Navajos that live off the reservation related to a, to a COVID debt? And Hashani, I don't know. 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 I don't I related to, you are shedding out many Navajo citizens related to these uh, COVID deaths. And uh, I believe this, 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 this person that passed on that was related to 100% COVID. And um, the, the family is stuck with a bill now. And um, 
So how do we, the, 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 the nation, address this related to that issue? To that Navajo that's living off the reservation, trying to make a, make their lives out there, that American dream. But yet they ask for help, and there's dollars available, and they're just pushed aside and said, "No, we can't, we can't uh, assist you because you're dealing with the mortuary that's off the reservation that we don't associate with." So, if the controller can can answer that, you know, I would really, really like to shed some light because um, that family is trying to find a way to pay that bill, and um, they're saying that we're not. We're not we're not privy to have um, a, a huge um, amount of money in our bank account, but if the nation could at least help us, you know that would be fine. Uh, this family is relocated out from Navajo due to the Navajo Hopi relocation land uh, the land dispute. Uh, it wasn't their fault that that, that 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 they lost land and they ended up relocating off the reservation. And they've been not put there. They're, they're residing put there. And how do we address and try to assist these Navajo out there? And it's a question I think kitchen on top. Tomorrow, I believe, I will have my agent on um, um, uh, making a um, making a plea to the Health and Human Service Committee and um, telling them what dilemma they're going through with the program. These programs are giving these families a joyride, telling them one day they are approved, and next day they're not approved. They're messing with their emotions. It really, really, really um, baffles me. And maybe, maybe, maybe that that's one way that we can um, um, elect to, 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 to help with the COVID death, you know? Maybe we we'll have to have those dollars infused into council, and we could um, manage it from here. And in Nanike, yeah, our division directors, our program managers, our people up in the hierarchy, so it's in that year, yeah? We pay them a lot of the money. But yet, these Navajo people, they put pants on each in the house, yeah? And uh, how can we get that service out to the Navajo people? Without telling them, no, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. She had a uh, questions, Chair Delgado. So, that uh, back to you, the committee. Any other questions? If not, um, I believe the controller, Kirk, if you would uh, respond to Delegate Odoso's um, question. Okay, um, so there are a number of resources that are available. So, um, um, there's burial assistance from the 638 fund. that before the COVID. So, Ajiko is a base of no AA income, Benina, AA, Aja base of Chone, um, Ado, Ado Nana, AA, um, um, epidemiology, Aja under, uh, Department of Health, Aja gay base of Sapanana, and then AA COVID related. So, a, um, it's based on blood quantum. Do a aja a 1.5 million a aja the chen hulia a a chu don in hi bin ya so ado um anni is do 4 million uusb a command center the chen kuta sa aja do a do sa burial day because do yo a do lu a do yo um bin ya ado um so there's three a koho um covid related igi epidemiology igi a digi ajo um federal dollars so one of the big hiccups is le um um the k hastindo 
e auto it takes some time hospital day ya o e di covid ni na ta ko ho sa ta no a ko tain de le state the medical examiner e di ki e ya um o an ni ko ta e ko ta covid ni na ta ke ha ti ta no e di ki it takes time so sha ta sha ta it takes more than than it should i i it's maybe it's a backup of some sort with the medical examiner but in the yagi a yan le beson hi jin ku yi la ji a a de a ya you need that on the kitchen in order to use these funds so right there it, um it holds things up auto um in terms of bishin day nishigi um the vendors a de ki a ya sa that a ya they don't want to work with us they don't want to take, they don't want to take a, a purchase order auto um i believe there's there's a few of them um so they don't want to contract with us too as well so a she of the dam bin at the um we do have the ability with some vendors um to be able to use a purchase card um our office opened that up for the sole purpose of getting these payments right away um we worked out a system where we can say could you go based on the legacy a object um but the ad h we don't eat edo dai could just not on us and then edo dai could just three three caught they see a so we worked out that system and um and so a day ya could ask so I do, I can't speak for the 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 division um for example social services so um department of health at Sasani at OPVP and um so a ya bahneki a ya social services wanted to be able to use those dollars that epidemiology had however um the money between Kuliagi is under department of health so and then also the the major hiccup as i mentioned before was the um waiting for the uh the state medical examiner because agga ya um they're they're via k count federal dollars etc on need the general fund to give a ya so yao pasa no da you can go in and and make payments and so forth um i believe the um so a de ya hot aus spahosen um so i can't speak for the divisions i i believe things were worked out from that meeting um and so i hope that uh payments are expedited and so forth um and, and um i think that's what i have so far i a de ya um de spahosens and i got Okay. Thank you for that. Uh committee members, any other comments? It's uh one thirty. We have a two o'clock now be work session. I mean so uh I don't hear anything, so I'll call for the question on accepting the report. Uh Santa Delegate uh Jimmy Yellow here. Okay, uh Vice Chair Smith. Green. Uh, Kashina Ago, uh, Shamat Delegate Cardi. Delegate Amber Kino's Bob Cardi votes green. Thank you. Kashina Ago, Shamat Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Shamat uh, Delegate Brown. Okay, Ago, Shamat Delegate Elmer Begay. I vote green. Uh, Kashina, back to um, top with uh, uh, our delegate uh, Jimmy Yellowhair. <clears throat> uh, delegate Yellowhair, Shanta. Uh, this is Shanta, delegate uh, Nathaniel Brown. 
that we have three in favor, uh, zero opposed to accept the report, chair not voting. But this will move forward to the next item on our agenda, which is uh, the CMY 44-20 CARES Act funding implementation of directives presented by Mr. Uh, Biel with the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, Mr. Biel? Uh, yes, sir, members of the committee. <clears throat> On this particular item, because the CARES Act money is um, federal money and therefore external funds, the, the main person in my office who's been working on this is Mr. Shorty as the contracting officer who handles external funds. So I'll go ahead and pass the bat baton to him, and he can speak more about this, Mr. Shorty. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Shorty? Chairman Hinyo, members of the Budget Finance Committee, and those who are in on the call. As I reported the last time, June 5th, I believe it was, uh, the expenditure plan form has been drafted and the expedited budget procedure has been drafted also. Uh, one of my staff and I took the lead on that. And, and then later we got DOJ uh, attorneys on board, namely Mel Rodas and Jenna Warner. Uh, controller's office, Madam Controller Kirk, uh, members of her staff, and then Dana from uh, Office of Legislative Council. So the, the draft was reviewed, and then based on comments and input, Welcome, and thank you for choosing free conference call. About 90% done. So we just need to finalize it based on the resolution that becomes law. And... Uh, I did provide a copy of that to uh, Ms. Nikai, the BNF advisor, for her uh, uh, review and information. So she, uh, I don't know if she shared that with you. But that, that's the status. The format has been developed and, and subject to final processing based on whichever resolution becomes law. Um, I think uh, yesterday's work session, there's an indication that the uh, resolution as modified by uh, Legislative Council and DOJ. This is the uh, Neslizer Resolution 0116-20. Uh, when that becomes law, then the, the, the format and the uh, procedure will, will be fi finalized based on that. So we look to have that ready. You see, tomorrow is Thursday, probably first of next week, and, and make it available for issue and, uh, and, and distribution to the public. So, so that that's where it's at. Chairman Hinu and a member of the Budget Finance Committee. Earlier, I uh, heard Dana uh, was on the call. If she's still on the call, and uh, she she can add to that as well, Mr. Chair. Okay, with that, um, Dana, are you still with the, uh, on the call with us? Uh, Ms. Uh, Lowe, Kristen Lowe, are you still on the call with us? Yes, Chair, I'm still on the call. 
Okay. Are you able to um, weigh in on this conversation, or um, we were uh, we were going to have a um, a further discussion this afternoon, um, but it's been postponed until tomorrow. So um, <laughs> DOJ has made some substantive comments to the forms and documents that Mr. Shorty has prepared. Um, so that discussion will happen um, after this meeting concludes. Tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow now. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Members, Chair? Uh, uh, Mr. This? Chair, this is Peggy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Peggy. Um, I didn't forward that uh, draft expenditure plan basically because I thought it was a working document with a group that uh, Dana has going to review that before it becomes public. For use. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, committee members. I to accept this report. I need a motion. I'll motion the other here. Okay, second. Uh, Del okay. Del here. Uh, is there a second? Elmer uh, by yes. Uh, Delmer Begay. Delegate Elmer Begay. Thank you, committee members. Do you have any questions for your presenters here? Uh, this is Delegate Crotty with a question. Uh, go ahead, Shema. Uh Thank you. Uh, so I, I would just say for everybody on the call, um, CMY-44-20 was um, is Navajo Nation law. And so I don't think, um, or I would say, uh, that program should not be waiting on legislation uh, 0116-20. There's a directive, and um, so I would want to know when the 20 days are up, uh, because this uh, also um, will reflect uh, the ability of your program um, to expedite, and in terms of how council um, will have discussions in terms of capacity or in terms of um, the role uh, that, that the different programs play in terms of like delay. So I'm concerned that um, executive programs are not recognizing CMY-4420 as law and not moving forward with the directives. I'd also ask um, any working documents be uh, emailed um, to myself and to the committee as a courtesy. As we move forward, uh, we are under um, public scrutiny in terms of how we expedite this process. Um, I would say and um, there could be a good argument for the delay of, of the nation um, not having a plan that could have possibly reduced um, the, the second allocation from U.S. Treasury. And I'm very concerned um, in terms of how we're... Um, it just seems like there's delays from the executive programs in, in trying to get this um, fund situated. And uh, so I, I just wanted to say that, uh, Chair, in terms of uh, the report, and um, and I would like that document uh, to be uh, submitted. And also, um, if Legislative uh, Council can just let me know when was that 20-day uh, timeline. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a calendar right here, and I need some help. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, any other questions, committee members? Okay, I'll go back to Mr. Shorty. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee, uh, the comment and um, advice by uh, Delegate Crawley certainly uh, take that under uh, advisement so at this point that uh, would be my response okay and then i believe um we also would need to reach out to the um chief of staff regarding the directives as far as oh. uh the programs there under their watch <clears throat> uh committee members any other comments or questions Mr. Chair, 
Uh, this is Peggy. I was uh, I, I went offline momentarily. So can you let me know what uh, was expressed? If if there's any assignments, please. Yeah, we we will do that. I'll, I'll send you an email regarding that. Um, but it was mostly concerning the directives as far as the Im implementation of it by the executive branch. And um, it's part of its law right now, CM44-20, same way. And um, there are directives attached to it that were not part of the details, so that's still in intact, so there needs to be some follow-up done on that. Uh, committee members, any other questions or comments? Okay, at the uh, uh, hearing none, I'll call for the question on this report, item F. Shinanta uh, Delgi, yellow hair. Avo Green, Shinanta. Kushina, Shinanta, Vice Chair Smith. Green. Ashima, Delegate Crowdy. Uh, Delegate Amber Kinosval Crowdy votes red. Thank you. Kushina, Ado Shinanta, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown. Okay, uh, Shanta, Delegate Elmer Begay. I'll vote green. Thank you, Shino. That we have three in favor, one opposed, chair not voting on this report. Thank you, Mr. Shorty, for uh, being with us this long here. Uh, we have one more item on their agenda, which is item G on the reports, which is the uh, Navajo Nation Solar uh, Project. And I believe we did have some um, a grant proposal that was uh, emailed to us by Shema Delgate Karate. And with this, so I'll give the floor to uh, Shema Delgate Karate for um, explanation on this uh, item. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I apologize. I wasn't able. Um, I damaged my, my um, delegate phone, and so I'm trying to uh, restore it. So our presenter was not able to get on the line. Um, but I did send this via email to all of my colleagues. What I just wanted to um, shed light on is that there are uh, Navajo um, solar power lighting initiatives here on Navajo Nation. Um, and I'll just briefly say that the project uh, description is their hopes is to install the 15,500 um, solar lights to Navajo families who are currently without uh, electricity. Uh, they have um, current equipment that they are, are using. Um, they have provided uh, services um, throughout Navajo Nation from Tohajule um, to Tuba City. And um, they can provide uh, where they're currently providing uh, services. This is at no cost to the families. And um, they do work with Navajo um, workforce to install. Uh, their targeted populations are elders over the age of 70. Uh, the next tier are elders over the age of 50 that are either handicapped or residing with handicapped family members. Um, and then their third tier is household with children of school age. Uh, and so conditions for participation are um, they need to reside in homes situated beyond the existing NTA or other um, providers and um, to be deemed eligible for the project and shall not have um, the means to pay for transitional lighting of their homes. And so I just briefly wanted to uh, share this information with my colleagues as we move forward. Um, I did request from NTA a breakdown of um, how many families uh, in each chapter are need um, electric uh, hookup, and uh, so this may just be um, either a temporary solution um, for some of the families that we may not reach um, in this fiscal year. And so I just wanted to give that update, and if there's any questions um, or concerns, uh, I'll provide additional information to my colleagues, or uh, we can um, schedule a call with uh, his name is uh, Joe Williams, and um, he's the the volunteer coordinator for this initiative. So the breakdown um, is uh, they're requesting money just for equipment, uh, 
some day, some direct labor, and then um, administrative overhead costs. So for the record, uh, this is a request for... Um, Five point two million dollars. Wow. Okay, so that's the report. Thank you, Chair. If there's any questions. Okay, thank you for that report. Uh to accept the report, is there a motion? Yeah, here. Motion there. Okay, so that delegate yellow okay. here. Is there a second to that? Okay, delegate under the gate. Uh Christine. With that, committee members. Any questions or comments on this report? No question. Uh, go ahead, Shinoda. I'll get Elmer Begay. Um, so there is it. Uh, is this Navajo owned it? Um, um or um, what's the, um, cause I don't know if you, if you have any brochures that you can send it to us too. That you can, um, I'm more interested in the camps or the wildest that they, that they have. And yeah, that, that, that will be because, uh, the people that are in the rural area, they, they, they would need that something that can light up a refrigerator, but usually that, that needs high voltage or amps on it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Is there any other comments or questions? Committee members? Back to Shema Delegate Crowdy. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, thank you, Delegate Begay. Uh, I did forward out um, the, the proposal on the last page, is there brochure? And they actually were just in white cone installing um, solar lights. And so I definitely will connect you um, to uh, this project and see how um, how else they can serve your community. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, committee members? I don't hear any. So this, uh, thank you for that. And I'll call for the question. Should uh, I get Jimmy Yellow here? I'll vote green. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Okay, Shema Delegate Crowdy. Uh, uh, Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crowdy votes green. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Shinanta, Delegate Brown. Shinanta, Delegate Elmer, the gay. I will agree. Kushina. And then go yeah, back. Uh, Delegate uh, Brown, I vote green. Yeah. Okay. Shinanta, Delegate Brown was green. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Okay, with that, uh, we have four in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Uh, thank you for that report. Chair, vote green. Um, okay, Vice Chair Smith votes green. This is time. Okay, with that, we are done with reports, committee members. And then uh, we have item six, old business is done. Item seven, new business. Uh, so we have a uh, Chair, this here. is Delegate Crotty. Yes. Um, I'd, I'd like to add a legislation that's um, to our agenda. Okay, motion to suspend the flow rules? Uh, yes. Well, Kashina, uh, what's your motion? Uh, yes, Chair. I'd like to uh, motion to suspend the floor rules to add uh, legislation 0126-20. Uh, this is the legislation to create the um, donation fund management plan. Okay, and with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Yellow hair. Yellow hair. I'll get yellow hair. Uh, the second is to suspend the flow rules and any questions regarding this um, motion, committee members, to add legislation 
0126-20. Uh, this uh, sponsor is available. Shima. Yes, the co-sponsor is Delegate Otto So, and he's on the line. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> For that, committee members, uh, there is no question uh, to suspend the floor rules to add legislation uh, 126-20. All those in favor, Shinanda Delegate Yellowhair. Alvo Crane. Question. Hey, uh, Vice. Well, uh, question, uh, Vice Chairman. Or who that? Is this emergency legislation? Okay, back to uh, Shimon Delgi Kradi. Is that emergency legislation? Uh, thank you, uh, Delegate um, Elmer Begay, for the question. Uh, no, this is um, has gone through the five day comment period and uh, is ready for uh, BNF. So it's um, available for our agenda today. Thank you for the question. Okay. So we have Shanda uh, Delegate uh, Yellow Hair uh, voting green. Vice Chair Smith? Uh, Vice Chair Smith? Green. Okay, green. Shema Delegate Cardi? Uh, sorry, uh, Delegate Amber Kittness Barcardi votes green. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's to our Delegate uh, Nathaniel Brown. <clears throat> yeah, that's Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not, uh, Delegate Elmer Begay. I guess it's green. I'll just tell. <laughs> we had five in favor, zero opposed. Uh, chair not voting, but this will have no uh, added uh, legislation 126 202 to the year. Uh, At your new business item, it would be um, item D, and then E would be the uh, scheduling of the special meeting. With that, committee members, new legislation, new business. We have uh, a new order. We deleted two from the uh, posted agenda. And now, so we are item A. Legislation number 127-20. Vice Chair Smith, uh, will you be able, can you, would you take the um, helm here? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we're on legislation 127-20. I'm sponsoring that, so I need your assistance to chair this meeting. Uh, Vice Chair Smith? Yes, sir. Okay. I, um, I, I'm going to defer the chair, chairman uh, duties to you for these first two legislation. I think we lost Vice Chairman, I can't hear you. Uh, Vice Chair, Vice Chair, we can, we can barely hear you. I'm starting to the Uh, Peggy, are you still there? Yes, sir, I am. <clears throat> okay, Vice Chair, are you in a good service area? <laughs> uh, Chairman Henio, can you hear me now? Uh, oh, yes, you're loud and clear. Okay, um, could we have that uh, legislation 0127-20 read digitally into the record? Okay, uh, thank you, 
Mr. Vice Chair. Um, let's see, legislation number 0127-20, an action relating to the Budget and Finance Committee as recommended by the Navajo Nation Investment Committee, authorizing the controller on behalf of the Navajo Nation to consent to Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprises in NGE request for the Navajo Nation to waive Section 5.9 of the Gaming Loan Agreement between the nation and NNGE and to forbear from enforcing certain covenants under the Gaming Loan Agreement and the Citizen Fund Loan Agreement from March 17, 2020 through October 30th, 2020. And that's sponsored by Jamie Henio, Council Delegate. And this legislation has been read into the record. And I did email this out to you. There was a link because this is a huge document and I'm hoping everybody got a copy of it. Mr. Vice Chair. Okay, so the Okay, you had not snot with me. Committee members need a motion. I'll motion the other One one. Mm -hmm. I said motion did the shit delegate yellow yeah, hair. Yeah, Jim yeah, Jimmy Yellow Hair did the motion. According to the agenda. Did we have that right? Now you need a second. Now you have you need a second now. There was no second. It was called for. Going on to the next list. What's the legislation number? I don't have the agenda in front of me. So, uh, Vice Chair, did you determine that that didn't receive a second, so we're going on to the next item? Yes, should try to. Okay. Uh, the next item is legislation number 0128-20, an action relating to budget and finance, approving the net college to borrow money in excess of $2 million. And that's sponsored by Jamie Henio, council delegate. And this has been electronically read into the record as well. Okay, Shepard, on legislation for the net college. Need a motion. This is Delegate Crotty with the motion. Thank you. Second. Going once. Going twice. Need a second. Going three times. No second. Second. I don't remember Second. Going to this legislation. Hello. Voting. Questions? Sponsor. Thank you. There? Yes. Uh, we, we could barely hear you. You keep breaking up. And I say I was confused on the 127, where they be called for a second or not. But um, it was, on 128, it was called. Yeah. Uh, I believe I have uh, Dr. Russo, Monty Russo, on the line. Are you there, Mr. Russell? Yes. yes, I am, Chair. Okay. <clears throat> Good to know. Uh, this legislation is um, has a request from the NAIC College uh, to uh, have the Budget and Finance Committee uh, approve the, the college to borrow money in excess of $2 million. Reason being is because there is an opportunity through the uh, CARES Fund, which I'll have Mr. Russell explain. Um, of why this legislation is um, needed. So with that, Mr. Russo, if you would enlighten us on your presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair, um, Vice Chair, members of the committee and staff. Uh, as you recall, the, uh, on May 15th, the Navajo Nation Council approved the waiver 
of limited sovereign immunity uh, for the college to be able to um, apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. <clears throat> we did that. We, uh, appreciate the council support. Okay. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Staff, you've got to mute your phone. I can hear you talking. Thank you. I'll uh, continue, Mr. Rothel. Okay, uh, thank you. And then, so what we're doing now is become coming before the BNF because within our charter of the Dinette College Charter, it says that the college only has the capacity to enter into a loan up to $2 million and anything above $2 million needs to be approved by the Budget and Finance Committee of the Navajo Nation. Therefore, we are coming before you to be able to, um, we've secured the, the PPP loan uh, through Wells Fargo, but this then allows us to complete that process now and actually utilize the funding um, with that process. So that is why we are coming before the BNF committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Vice Chair. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Also, um, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Russo, would you explain the, the forgiven, forgiveness part of it? Okay. Where is the <clears throat> college be forgiven by Wells Fargo? Yes. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think one of the, the things that we're looking at, as, as you may be aware of, uh, President Trump signed last week uh, some changes to the PPP loan. Uh, initially, it was you had to. It was only for expenses within eight weeks. Now that's been extended to 48 weeks. It used to be that it had to be paid back within two years. Now it's been extended, I believe, to four years um, going forward. So any funds that deal with um, payroll can be forgiven. Any funds that we use that'll be used for um, um, utilities can be forgiven. So we're looking and we're hoping we were, you know, we've been approved at $3.3 million with Wells Fargo. Uh, we're hoping now with those new added changes uh, that 100% of this loan will be forgiven. It, whatever the balance is that is not approved as forgiven, the interest rate is 1% of the balance. Um, so that's what we're looking at going forward. Um, and I think that um, based on those new changes and based on this, I think we're we're confident that we'll be able to one make sure that it, uh, there are some guidelines that go with that payroll, <clears throat> but we're confident that we'll be able to have a hundred percent of that uh, loan forgiven. Okay, thank you, Mr. Russell, for that explanation. So, good afternoon, uh, Budget and Finance Committee needs. Members who are asking for your support on this legislation uh, for the employees at the Nay College, Aden Khati, Nishigi. And this has gone through the, um, the original legislation went before uh, our, our committee. But uh, this one to borrow money in excess of $2 million. It's just uh, budget and finance is the final authority. So, with that, though, we ask for your support. And to move this to approve this, so the new college can move forward with their uh, operations. Again, uh, thank you, Vice Chair Smith. Again, uh, Shnada, Chair, so uh, Mr. Russell, um, committee Thanks, members, sir. any questions? Chair, Vice Chair, who oh. is this? Shnada. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Governor Jay Chaza. Uh, um, um, is there a second for the, the legislation before that, recording the um, gaming? What happened? There was no second. I called for it, and uh, we moved I, forward. I, I don't know if you if you if you if you if you heard me. We didn't understand you too. You're picking up for a while. It's uh. So I was I made seconds and from there, so I thought that I made the second. So I thought we were we were um, 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 talking about that. We were talking about the the, the college. So that's, I just want to make a clarification that I did the second. Okay, we we can go back to uh, see what legislative council advises us on 
the okay. first legislation. All right. Let's talk about this with first. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Christina. Yeah. Dene College. Uh, do you have any All questions, right. committee members? No questions. Am I breaking up again? Loud you good? No, we could hear you loud and clear, Vice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. If there's no questions, let's call for the question. Uh, Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. I vote green, sister. Okay, Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Crotty? Uh, Delegate Amber Kanesbaugh Crotty votes green. Thank you. Honorable Crotty <coughs> votes green. Uh, Honorable Nathan Brown? Nathaniel Brown? Honorable Nathaniel Brown? Honorable Elmer Begay, Doc. Vote green. Going back. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Chair Henio. I vote green. We have four in favor. One not voting. And Vice Chair not voting. Um, let's say council. Since my phone was breaking up and we didn't get a second, uh, what is the uh, procedures on re-entertaining legislation number 0127-20? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, this is um, Kristen Lowell from Legislative Council. Um, in light of the fact that Mr. Begay um, maintains that his um, second was not heard, um, it's your discretion to uh, allow for the legislation to be essentially recalled. Well, thank you, Mr. Right Council. Uh, back to the committee members. Let's go back to the legislation 0127. Um, uh, point of order. Point of order. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. I'm raising a point of order. Uh, you did not. I, I heard you very clearly. Um, I have a clear sign. I'm here at the at the um, I'm here at the chambers, um, not the chambers, the delegates' office. So on my end, I heard you call it, and um, and so I'm not exactly sure um, why uh, we can't move on with the agenda. Uh, we're on a tight timeline. Point of order is. Honorable Crotty could hear me clearly as I called for the second, and there was no second, and we moved forward. <coughs> However, I cannot decipher that because I'm the one that's speaking on my phone. Sometimes I do have uh, bad service out here. So with that, um, if one of the what? delegates has heard that, um, Legislative Council, how do we address this? Because one was saying, uh, yay, they heard that, and others were saying, you know, uh, could we get a clarification on this? Point of order. Mr. Vi Mr. Vice Chair. So the issue yes. would be the issue would be Mr. Big Gay was trying to make the second. The issue would be whether or not we heard him make the second, not whether the vice chair um people couldn't hear the vice chair's line because those of us that heard you asking for the second Obviously, it wasn't an issue with your reception. Mr. The issue is, did Mr. Begay have trouble being heard making the second? If he's maintaining that he was making the second but wasn't heard, um, he, he, has to, he has to make that assertion. Well, thank you, Legislative Council. This puts me in a very, very tight situation here. Um, I called it, and I waited for a second. I called it again, and I waited, and nobody responded. So we moved forward, and even Peggy asked me the question, where is, uh, what are we doing? I said, we're moving forward. The next legislation, which is, was just entertained. So therefore, as being the chair of this, uh, legislation that was uh, first entertained. I called for the second, and I didn't hear a second. Uh, I will 
turn the floor back over to Chairman Henio to move forward. Uh, thank you. Um, Chair, Chair, Vice Chair. I just, Chair. Yes. Chair, I disagree with my sister, uh, Claudia. She's right closer to that. She's very fortunate that she's right uh, next door. She's, she's making that call. But we live in the remote areas. We had to go to different places to get the signal. So that's where we are. So I don't think uh, why. Because we don't, you guys don't know where I am. So. Okay, thank you, uh, Da. Uh, Legislative Council, if we don't entertain this, this just goes to the next uh, regular uh, committee meeting, correct? Mr. Vice Chair, um, this is Kristen Lowell. Um, yeah, this this is not, um, BNF is final authority on this issue. So um, BNF will have to weigh in on this issue. Um, there's nothing, there's no, um, procedural rules that allow for the committee uh, to, to change something um, indefinitely. So it's not some systems allow for um, procedural hurdles to be put in place before um, the legislation um, can be enacted. Uh, this is not the case uh, for the Navajo Nation. As you know, uh, legislations move forward to the next committee. However, since uh, BNF is the final authority on this issue. Um, there's no, there's nowhere for it to move forward to. Correct. Uh, for the record, I did call for a second, and there was no second, and that's on the record, and we didn't hear anybody calling for second. So therefore, I will call for the chair to take back over the uh, uh, seat, and we'll move forward with the agenda. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for um, uh, chairing the meeting on the two legislations. Uh, we'll move forward to um, uh, legislation zero one zero four dash two zero, sponsored by uh, my chair, Delegate Odo. So, are you still on the line? Spent off. <clears throat> chair, Delegate Odo. So. Going once, that will get older so. A sponsor, a delegate older so, going twice. A sponsor, a delegate older so, going three times. Last call for 0104 dash 20. There is no sponsor, so move forward. To, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, Chairman Henio, this is Otto. Hold on, uh, can I, uh, can I call you back yet? Yes. Okay. Ha. Chairman Henio, this is Otto, I'm sorry. Okay, we're gonna, last call, this mean day. Okay, 104-20. So, I uh, you take your seat, you're still right at the last minute. With that, uh, okay. Make, would you read that into the record for a re -vote? <clears throat> okay, members of the Budget and Finance Committee, legislation number 0104-20, an action relating to Law and Order Committee, Budget and Finance Committee, Nebuchadnezzar Committee, and the Navajo Nation Council, approving supplemental funding from the unreserved, undesignated fund balance in the amount of for the Navajo Hopi Legal Services Program to fund the shortfall of two professional staff positions through the end of FY 2020, waiving 12 NNC Section 820E and 820F of the Appropriations Act. And this is sponsored by Otto So, um, Thomas Walker Jr., and Mark Freeland, Council Delegates. And this has been electronically read into the record and is ready for the committee's consideration. Okay, with this for a re hey. uh, uh committee members, is there a motion? First Chair. Vice Chair Smith, is a motion? Is there a second? 
Yellow hair, second. Jason and Bob Doggy, yellow hair. Uh, any questions or comments on the reboot, committee members? I believe we had yeah, discussed this item at the previous meeting. I have to know you. I'll call for the question on the reboot uh, to ratify the uh, action that was taken by BNF previously. Santa Delgi Yellow here. Yellow hair votes green. Christina, uh, Vice Chair Smith? Green. Okay, Shema Delegate Crowdy? Uh, Delegate Amber, Kinos Bar Crowdy votes green. Thank you. Okay. Uh, those, uh, the select Delegate Nathaniel Brown? Uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown, Shenanda? Okay, Shenanda, Delegate Elmer Begay? Shenanda, Delegate Elmer Begay? Okay, we have uh, three in favor, uh, zero opposition, chair not voting, and Delegate Brown and Delegate uh, Begay not voting also. But that, uh, Chair, your legislation is good to go forward to the next level. <clears throat> Item E on the agenda, legislation 126-20. Uh, DA uh, is uh, legislation that was just added. And the sponsor of this is uh, uh, Chairwoman Charles Newton, uh, co-sponsored by uh, Delegate Odo Che, Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Christina, this uh, 126-20, uh, Piggy. This is a legislation uh, number, this is a legislation number 0126-20, an action relating to relating to budget and finance and navigate committees and the Navajo Nation Council, establishing the Navajo Nation COVID-19 response donation fund to house financial donations made to the Navajo Nation to assist in the fight against COVID-19 on the Navajo Nation, waiving Navajo Nation code set aside provisions sponsored by Eugenia Charles Newton and Otto So Council delegates. This has been electronically read into the record and is ready for the committee's consideration. Ms. Sheila, this uh, committee members, is there a motion on 126-20? Um, what's the yellow hair? Okay, so the dog dog yellow hair. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second Delegate Amber Kinos Bob Crowdy. Okay. There's a motion and a second on this uh, resolution. This uh, committee members, are there any questions or comments regarding this? Uh, maybe Chay Odoso, if you would give us a summary of this legislation. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, this legislation 126 is establishing the fund management plan for the uh, uh, Navajo Nation do donation relating to the um, to the to the to the COVID donations that are going on. Okay, eight. It, I see. I see. It, um, uh, we have about four million dollars tied up, and um, so we have. And, and, and the controller and the attorney general made a report earlier relating to that to that to that fund there uh, that that they have been collecting. And uh, this is to, to create the, the uh, path of information so that we can go ahead and uh, 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 start, um, uh, start the path for the expenditure for that $4 million that had been donated gracefully by the Navajo P uh, or out from, 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 from people all over the place. So AAAE, you see, and yeah, this is establishing that, that fund management plan related to that issue. I believe the Department of Justice is on line. Um, Doreen? I'm here. Or Jenna? Okay. If you can uh, uh, add in a, a, a little bit of uh, information. Sure. So, um, 
This particular legislation that establishes the fund um, in order for DEM to be able to um, expend those funds for COVID-19 efforts and also to ensure that the funds are accounted for and audited. Um, as we reported earlier today, uh, there's uh, $4.8 million with OOC and $1.5 in a GoFundMe account, and we've not been able to use any of that funding for COVID-19 uh, efforts um, because we, we need the funding to be first appropriated uh, by the uh, Budget and Finance Committee and by the Council. And so uh, with the enactment of this particular legislation, it'll um, establish that fund. We do have a draft fund management plan uh, that we would bring back to HES committee under this legislation and then back to budget and finance um, to be able to spend money consistent with the fund management plan. But this legislation right now would, um, would establish that fund. And uh, I, I know that uh, Jenna and uh, Mel worked with uh, Chief Legislative Council Bob Ross on this particular legislation. So if they have anything further to add that I've left out, that would be great. Thank you. All right, then. Thank you very much, um, uh, uh, Madam Attorney General. I don't uh, addition on uh, 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 We need to get this in, uh, this legislation passed so that we can uh, start that path of expend expending those dollars that that are um, uh, that are being collected, that uh, were Madam uh, um, Attorney General expanded on. So, it is yes, it is taking a positive vote. Yeah. I'll go share with that. Committee members, any questions or comments for uh, on legislation one two six zero? But for I got a question, Chair. Vice Chair Smith, good. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I don't committee members. I just want to make a point and also encourage the vote on this. The point I want to make is this is something like that 115-20, and it turned into CMY-4420. There's no expenditure in this right now. Yeah. Enabling the president, he may line I'd be to say no, you cannot apply as a line item veto, but it's just an enabling legislation. And enabling legislation, all we're saying is we want to set it up. To, can benefit of our people out there. Uh, you Mike, Mike, you're, you're, break, you're breaking up, Mike, Chair. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me oh, now? Yes, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, Barry, you hear still on the street. I'm not uh, I'm well, I need to go back to the hearing box. You're you're fitting in and out. How about? Can you hear me, sir? No, we can. Okay. Yeah, okay, here, too. Uh, you're still in and out, my sir. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, so we get uh, Vice Chair back on the line. I have a question. Uh, I'll get Amr begin. I guess I will tell him the truth. <laughs> I it happened. I, I, I don't hear him too. I think that's about that. Was there a question? Yes, the question was that uh, you did. I didn't hear him when it was saying second, but I did say second, though. 
I guess you can hear him now. Yeah, I guess you can hear him now. Okay, but not, there's no question towards uh, legislation 126-20. Hey, Vice Chair Smith, are you still back on the line? Touch. Hear you? Uh, go ahead. I, I, I think we'll be able to hear you. Oh. Vice Chair, which breaks now. Uh, Just spoke. Okay. With that, any other questions, committee, committee members? Can I uh, call for the question? Uh, should I delegate the yellow hair? Yellow hair votes for the green. Thank you, Sheena. Uh, Vice Chair Smith? Green. Thank you, Sheena. I'll go to my delegate, Crotty. Yep. Uh, delegate Amber Kamen's Bar Crotty votes green. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. I'll go to my delegate, Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown, both screen. Yeah. I can hear you, Sunan. Green or red? Are you talking to me? Oh, oh, Hello? Hello? oh, oh, green. Yeah. Oh, green, okay. Uh, there's some background noise. I can barely hear you. Um, four, five in favor, zero opposed, 126 dash 20 uh, passes, and it goes on to um, the KFT committee. <clears throat> this uh, committee members, we have uh, one more item in the new business section, which is uh, scheduling a special meeting with the Budget and Finance Committee and to um, Take care of these um, uh, revote or legislations that are time sensitive. Too well, so it's what we request. And our next the committee meeting is not until July 7th, and it's the 16th right now. So there's two weeks left in um, June. And June 23rd and the 30th are the Tuesdays. But um, committee members, uh, the floor is open for. Um, Suggestions, but I'll give the floor to Shamati Elgikari who made this request. If you would enlighten us on the uh, your request again, so the other delegates that were on the line at that time, they could um, be aware of what's happening here. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chairman Henio. I appreciate the time. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, I did request uh, that we could add a special uh, BNF uh, meeting. Uh, to address the legislations um, that need to be revoted, and so that um, they're not delayed. And so, uh, just looking at uh, the time frame, um, I will. Um, I have a few suggestions. Um, first, my question is: Is there a regular scheduled NABI uh, this Thursday, the 18th, or is it scheduled the 25th? Um, because I would recommend that we meet um, before. Uh, if any of, I'm not exactly sure the legislative process, um, but if we could meet prior to any um, action that needs a NABI approval or a Navajo Nation Council approval, uh, so that we're, uh, so that our committee is not the delay in the process. Uh, thank you, and I'm open for any questions or suggestions. Thank you, Chair. Gashina, thank you for that. Um, question to our Peggy. Nakai or legislative council is there now we can't take meeting uh on the thursday the 18th um mr chair as far as i know uh the speaker did make an announcement yesterday at the nobby work session that there is going to be a uh nobby meeting on thursday and i believe it starts at 10 o'clock there are work sessions at two o'clock today and i think there's one tomorrow too Okay, thank you for that clarification. With that, we have a Navigator uh, committee meeting on Thursday. Um, also, through Peggy, another question of these. Are there any pending legislations for BNF that need uh, a revote besides uh, what we just um, 
we voted on, which is 104-220. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, the two legislations that you deleted from the agenda, 43-20 and also 58-20, those two are the only ones that I know of, that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So with that, we have an update meeting on um, Thursday, June 18th, and I believe the two legislations would be uh, going forward to the committee uh, after a budget and finance. So uh, committee members, any uh, suggestions on the uh, special meeting date? We need to send this request to Speaker Damon as soon as this uh, meeting is over. Uh, Chairman Henio, uh, thank you. So in terms no, of looking, if, if I may, if our committee or colleagues, um, if we could, uh, because we need 24-hour notice, uh, if uh, are my colleagues agreeable to a possible special meeting Thursday the 18th, either at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, um, to hear those legislations to be ready for NABI? Uh, that would be my suggestion, uh, Chair. Thank you. So um, we'll just uh, take a vote on it. Is that your motion, Shema, for uh, Thursday, June 18th at 830 or to say 9 o'clock? Uh, if we could just do 8 o'clock to be on the safe side and allow for processing for the 10 o'clock meeting. Okay. We got this. So there's a motion for June 18th at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Is there a second? I'll just I'll take a second. You're there. Thank you, Second, uh, Doug Yellow here. <clears throat> Just, uh, any questions or comments, committee members, for a special meeting uh, for June 18th at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning? And along with this, uh, back to our motion party, Shema. Is this just uh, legislative I legislation items only? No reports. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll leave it up to the committee. Um, I just think I just know we're on a tight timeline. Thank you. Okay, Shana. Thank you for that. Committee members, any questions or comments regarding the motion in the second setting the special meeting for July 8, June 18th at 8 o'clock in the morning? Floor is open. Can somebody mute their phone? I can hear conversation going on. If not, I'll call for the question. It's not that delegate yellow hair. How about cream, my friend? Kashina, thank you, Shanta. Mr. Smith. Green. Okay, I don't delegate Crowdy. Uh delegate Amber Kinnisba Crowdy votes green, thank you. Okay. Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Kushina Ados. Delegate Elmer Begay. Chair votes Kushina. We have five in favor, zero opposed. Uh, chair not voting. Uh, before we move off of a uh, new business, I just have a question for um, Legislative Council. On 127-20, since there was a motion but no second, it was considered to be considered. Does this legislation die? Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Kristen Mo, Legislative Council. Uh, no, the legislation can be uh, brought up again um, at the next committee meeting. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Christina. And with that, uh, committee members, uh, we are done with new business items. Eight close of session, written announcements, adjournment. Uh, written announcements, I we did not receive any. Peggy, did you receive any written announcements? Um, Mr. Chair, I believe it's just the um, meetings for the for NABI. We received those notices saying that at two o'clock today, I believe there was a a intech work session, and then tomorrow there's a veteran. Session. Okay, At thank you for that. Okay, Shana, thank you for that. Uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.
Chairman Hanger, before you adjourn, yes. this is Ramona. I need the location for Elmer Begay and Nathaniel Brown for roll call purposes, please. Okay. Uh, select delegate Nathaniel Brown. Call them on Nudger. Yeah, they are and they have a And then I hope that. I get reservation in our life. Don't get gone. I do. 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 I Okay. With that, uh, Ramona, were you able to get that? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Here you go. Good evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, Brenda. Uh, I'll delegate you over here. Motion to adjourn. Second by Vice Chair Smith. That committee member is motion to adjourn at 2.35 p.m. Uh, I'll delegate you over here. Yes, Steve. Okay, Aldo, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Bye. <laughs> okay, see, Aldo, uh, so my delegate, Cardi. <laughs> uh, delegate advocate of the Cardi votes green. Thank you. Thank you, committee members. So, the delegate, Daniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Okay, Aldo, and our delegate, Elmer Begay. Okay. Green. Green. Five in favor, is there opposed to it? Hereby adjourn. Get along committee members for a productive meeting. And also be careful when you're out there, stay safe. And you wash your hands. I'm going out. Yes, Tiller. Thank you very much, Tiller. Chair. Yeah, Chair. 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 Who made the motion yes. for the, who made the uh, del motion for del the adjournment? Shall we get yellow hair? Shall we get yellow hair? Yes. Yeah. Second by Vice Chair Smith. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, committee members.